everybody, Dare Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuwoki Zuisoroku. The fan disc material included in the PS3 version of Hakuwoki Stories of the Shinsengumi. Today we are reading Hijikana Memories of Love Part 7. And the premise is June 1869. Hijikata is shot in battle. The protagonist tries desperately to treat his wound, but it quickly becomes apparent that the wound is too grave even for his fury enhanced regenerative powers. She offers her blood to him, but... Let's see. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. You're the reason I want to live. Oh. At first, I couldn't believe the words I was hearing, but his kiss burned away any doubts. All the words he couldn't say were in that kiss. His warmth filled my body and healed my heart. Even if the Shinsengumi were to disappear, I would remain by his side. Once the war ends, I want to give him a reason to live. Even now I want to give it to him, not when the war ends. June 1869 The Battle of Hakodate finally reached its climax. The Imperial Army had reached Eizo and begun their attack. They marched from the other side of Hakodate Mountains with the intention of capturing Benton Fortress. The fort protected the bay and was defended by the Shinsengumi who were under the command of Shimada. Attacked from behind, they were completely cut off. Hijikata left Koryukaku to save Benton Fortress and his comrades. I accompanied him, of course. But on our way through the forest, Hijikata was shot off his horse. We began to run. Memories of Love, Part 7 June, 1869 I don't know how far or fast we ran. Only that we were desperate. Every time I began to flag, I reminded myself that if we failed, Hijikata would die. To our considerable luck, he was able to walk more or less on his own. If his wound had rendered him immobile, I would have almost certainly have been unable to carry him on my own. However... Hijikata! Oh, he looks terrible. I'm fine, and apparently still alive. Oh, but they even really made him look pale here. Blood had soaked the area around his wound, and his face was white. My own clothes and hands were drenched in his blood as well. I don't think there's anyone around. We should try and stop your bleeding. Yeah, get to it. I was a doctor's daughter, and I'd seen battle many times. A gunshot wound was something I should be able to treat easily. I willed my hands to stop shaking and tore open his shirt. He'd been hit in the stomach. Their aim had been disturbingly good. This is awful. Looking at the wound, it was clear that running had likely not made things any better. Normally, his fury powers would have activated and healed the wound, but dark blood was still oozing out from his stomach. Hijikata's eyes were squeezed shut in pain, so much pain that he seemed to be unable to speak. I told myself he was going to be all right. Then, I bit my lip until it hurt and set to work. Once I'd finished, I looked up to see his eyes were closed. I shook him gently. Hijikata, when you're feeling good enough to move, we should get back to Goryokoku. Maybe we should try to hide and rest longer. The men you were with have probably scattered by now. We need to go back and regroup. <sighs> Hijikata, can you hear me? Does he have a fever? Yeah, I hear you. You're right. I can't just run off by myself and fight. Right. I nodded vigorously. If he loses consciousness, then... Uh, I had to keep him talking. It'll be okay. I know Shimada won't go down without a fight. They'll be waiting for you to join them. D damn right. Nobody messes with the Shinsengumi. Can't waste time. We need to get back. They need us. You're right. I... I know you can do it. I had my hand pressed against his wound, and I could feel wetness welling up beneath my fingers. Without looking, I knew he was still bleeding. No. My voice shook. No! This was bad. If I couldn't stop the bleeding, he... he... I began to panic. Any normal person would have died long ago, and although Hijikata was far from normal, even he had to have limits. Hijikata! Stop. 
I can hear you. His voice was barely above a whisper. Even if he was a fury, it was only a matter of time. <sighs> then I realized what I had to do. My body stopped shaking. He was a fury, not a human. And that meant... Hijikata. I swallowed and looked down at his face, contorted in pain. I want you to drink my blood. His eyes opened to slits. Please, if you don't do something, you're going to... to... I didn't wait for him to respond. With one motion, I pulled my kodachi from its scabbard at my hip. Then, without hesitation, I lifted it up to my arm. Stop. I jumped and the sword tumbled from my hands to land with a thump on the soft earth. Even though he was almost too weak to move, I had heard the familiar steel in his voice. Why? Don't need it. I'll be fine in a bit. Liar. Told you, remember. I'm not going to die yet. You're my reason for living. I won't die. I can't die. He ground his teeth against the pain as he spoke. I... Oh, I actually have to say I don't believe you. I'm calling you on this one, pal. I don't believe you. I believe that you want to live, but you're not going to be fine this time. Chizuru. He looked surprised. It's your fault. You always act tough and you've tricked me into thinking you're really okay so many times. But this time you won't. I figured you out. I don't think you'd admit something was wrong if someone had cut your arm off. <laughs> it probably wasn't what he needed to hear at the moment, but... I'd gone past caring what he wanted. Perhaps he sensed I wasn't going to back down. Damn. What a woman. And you like it. His lips curled up in a weak grin. Maybe I made a mistake. Ate a woman. Too much trouble. <laughs> Too late now, buddy. You're stuck with me. Any other time, I'd put up with your scolding, but... Before I could finish, he closed his eyes. It felt like a surrender. Do whatever you want. Whatever I want, huh? Okay, sorry, it's not time for that. His voice was weak and broken, and I felt tears burn at the corner of my eyes. Hijikata slumped back against the tree, and I reached for his sword. What about my sword that I dropped on the ground? I slid the blade along my wrist and hissed involuntarily at the pain. The blood that dripped from my arm was the same color as his. I sucked it into my mouth. New picture! Then placed my lips against his and let it out. Oh. <sighs> I heard him swallow. Is that a tear? Hijikata's crying. Even half-conscious, his body craved blood. Here. Again, I pressed my mouth over his. I would give him as much blood as he might need. He couldn't die here. The thick coppery taste of blood filled my mouth, and the air around us was thick with the smell of it, but I pushed on. Wrist to mouth, wrist to mouth, bit by bit, I fed him my own life, and every time our lips touched, I said a silent prayer. Live, Hijikata, live! Live. Then, after I didn't know how long, he stopped me. Hijikata? That's enough. The bleeding stopped. And he has some color back. His face was still pale as death, but a little bit of color had returned to his cheeks, and his voice sounded steadier. That was stupid. You hurt yourself again. I'll be fine, see? I held up my wrist so he could see that the wound was already closing, but he only frowned and looked away. Not the point. Who was to see the woman he loves in pain? Think about how I feel next time. Well, what woman wants to see the man he loves in pain? The moment he wasn't knocking at death's door, he was chiding me, and I laughed. Well, you should think about mine, too. Exactly! Who wants to see the man she loves in pain? <laughs> Shut up. Well, it looks like he's smiling about it. The only way to describe his behavior was pouting, and I laughed again. Still, Although he seemed somewhat recovered, the wound he'd suffer was likely not fully healed. Perhaps his fury powers were waning? I said nothing, and he did the same, but I was sure the same thought was in both our minds. Let's get moving. They'll find us sooner or later if we don't get out of here. Okay. Perhaps we both hoped that we could leave those frightening thoughts behind, 
in that blood-soaked patch of forest. And perhaps if we left them behind, they would cease to be real. Come on, we can get to Goryukaku from the back. Okay. I'd prefer it if we'd ever kiss like that again. Oh, come on, you know it was fun. I mean, yeah, it'd be better without the blood, but hey, we take what we can get. He gave me a better smile, and I nodded back. I settled his arm against my shoulder and helped him stand. Spring was coming, and the cherry trees would explode in the bloom. But we didn't know then the fate that waited for us under those very same trees. How could I have seen that confronting that fate would earn the man that I loved another name? The demon who called him Hakuoki was about to step out of the shadows. And what a battle that was. So, yep, only one more... Memories of love with Hijikata. Jeez, I really want to do Harada next, but I kind of want to go in order because then it's less confusing for me and I don't forget things so easily. I don't know, we'll see when it comes time. I still have one more video to think about it. So, I hope to see you in the next video or in some of my other ones. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.